Hello everybody, I'm Sai from Ichigo Kimishiro Arclight and thank you so much for watching this video which just so happens to be my 200 speed paint here on YouTube. I can't believe I got this far already. It's really unbelievable. I also have over 600 subscribers so hooray hurrah. Like I said, it's very big and uh, for me it's a personal milestone as I, like I said, I didn't think I'd be getting this far. So anyway, for today's video, I'm going to be doing a redraw of my second speed paint that I did on this channel, which was of my character, Kyla Lacidian. For my 100th, there was a little bit of debate about that in my own head, because my first speed paint was of Yuzu Haragi from Yu Yu Arc V, and although I really wanted to do a redraw of my first speed paint, I didn't like how Arc V ended, so I ended up doing Marika from Full Moon Asagashita instead because her traditional speed draw was the first time I showed myself on YouTube using a digital art software, the Skimp, by the way. I did this really trashy traditional drawing, and then when I was done, I scanned it into my computer and then held my camera up to the computer screen and made a really trashy background. So yeah, nothing to be proud of. But I knew if I ever got to 200, there would be no doubt in my head of what I should draw, and that would be a redo of my second speed paint, which I'm always in the mood for drawing my own character, so yeah, it was going to be no problem. I guess it's also of the two twin dragons, uh, Lucidian and Xerio, ever known as the Dragon of Light and the Dragon of Dark, so yeah, that's my subject. And for my topic, I'm gonna talk about my art journey. I'm fair warning, it's really long and it's kind of jumbled, so uh, yeah, you might not want to listen to it, in which case you can just push mute and listen to some music. And stuff that's fully understandable but anyway i hope you enjoy uh my art journey while i draw here we go enjoy i've been drawing ever since i was really young i drew on everything and anything my favorite thing to draw was ariel and by ariel i mean i had my mama draw a mermaid and then i colored it with jewelry and i called it ariel the first show i watched on television that was art related i actually don't really remember what it was, but I do remember that the one I watched the most was Bob Ross, which is kind of weird because he's an internet meme now. Because of that though, painting was probably my favorite medium, although I just used cheap watercolors from my uh, Grammy she bought from the dollar store. One day though, when my family went to the YMCA, I found the wonderful world of MS Paint. And a little while after that, my family got their own computer. And when I was seven, they let me on it, and I rediscovered the wonderful world of MS Paint. And I had a lot of fun drawing on it. The first thing I drew that was actual drawing and not me just playing around with it was a cat. And the most proudest thing I drew on it was a picture of an elephant that I gave my mama for Mother's Day, which I actually still have for a keepsake. However, because of this, I slowly got away from my traditional methods of drawing slash painting. The only thing I really did were random scribbles that I made when I was supposed to be doing my schoolwork. One of my most favorites was of a character I called Anastasia Vale, aka Black Fox, who I'm actually just remembering was originally called the Black Coyote, but I changed it to Fox because it more suited her personality. And she was a superhero. Ever since I was little, I really loved superheroes. And me, along with my brother, would write our own stories and create our own superhero characters, and we dreamed about being comic book writers and artists for DC Comics. And although being a comic book writer slash artist is still my dream, doing it for one of the big companies like DC and Marvel like I originally wanted sounds like my nightmare as I hate all current comic books and the comic book industry as a whole, so yeah. Anyway, my favorite superheroes were Batman, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, and Robin. Favorite shows were, and still are, The Batman, Batman the Animated Series, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, Spectacular Spider-Man, Teen Titans, Avengers Earth Mighty Heroes, Young Justice, but only season one because after that it kind of falls off the wagon, and Batman Beyond. Anyway, my first real superhero character was Ariel, named after Disney's The Little Mermaid. Ariel, and uh, she could turn into a mermaid, so yeah, nothing really original or new or clever at all. I made her when I was ridiculously young, so yeah. However, the Black Fox, I'm just gonna keep calling her the Black Fox even though her real name is Anastasia because that's just easier for me. She was the first one I made that wasn't the crazed imaginations of a four year old little girl and not a direct ripoff of somebody else's. She was, however, loosely inspired off of Batman, Green Arrow, Hawkeye, and Huntress. The version of her from uh, Justice League Unlimited. 
as that was the only one I knew at the time. And I'm aware that a lot of people who watch my videos probably don't even know what comic books are, so this is probably all going over their heads anyway. Anyway, after I made the black box, me and my brother made a few more heroes and we put them in a series we called Protectors, which is something we just messed around with uh, back then and we still do to this day, uh, just for story writing fun. And uh, I actually still have the black box and although some things have been upgraded because I made her when I was pretty young, she still has a lot of the key elements that made up her originally, which kind of sounds lame now that I'm saying it. But because of that, it makes her my oldest OC and I still am very proud of her. I actually did a recent redesign. You can check it out on DeviantArt and just for yourself wherever you like it. But uh, yeah. My love for digital art, though, started getting even more expanded when I took some images of Huntress from the DC's World's Finest website, and I painted over them with MS Paint and turned them into the black box. And at first they looked really, really bad, but I kept on doing it, and it got to the point where it didn't even look like her, and it was actually starting to look pretty good. And I got to the point where I could actually do it really fast. And... I'm not saying that this is anything impressive or anything that is different from tracing, it's not. I still am proud of it because it really did give me a taste for digital art and it was just something that did take a lot of work and time and because of that I still keep a lot of them for keepsakes and the ones I don't keep accidentally got deleted so it wasn't even intentional and they are all very special to my heart. Anyway, back to the art. Like I said, outside of some random doodles, I kind of slowed down on the traditional art until one day I found a video on YouTube by an uh, unknown artist of a speed drawing of Professor Layton and his sidekick Luke of the video game Professor Layton. I couldn't find the video so I wasn't able to figure out who the artist was because I can't remember so sorry about that. Anyway after that I found on the sidebar a video by Mark Crowley of how to draw a realistic eye and I followed along with it and after that it really started getting me back into art. I became a huge fan of Mark Curley's videos and I followed along with them like crazy. It also got me into finding some new anime as well, some I deeply regret. Anime was something I wasn't really into for the longest time. The few shows I had watched that I liked I thought were just cartoons. And those were two VHS's of the original Superbook. Does anyone know what that was? A couple of episodes of Pokemon, Sonic, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Although I remember specifically what the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters episode was, along with the 5Ds one, I can't remember what the GX one was, they all look the same to me. But the ones I watched consistently were Mega Man NT Warriors and later on one called Dinosaur King, which I actually rewatched both of those recently, and although they are more childish, I still like them, but that is probably because of the strong nostalgic tie. But, like I said, I thought they were all cartoons, and it didn't help that Teen Titans, an American show, looked very much like it. I now know that... No, that is because Teen Titans was copying the anime style. Cool. Later on, though, when entering 2011, I started watching a lot more anime. My first teen one, I feel like, was Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Uh, my first darker one was Death Note. My first subtitled one that I saw all the way through, and was that my brother was Tales of the Abyss, which was based off of the Tales of the Abyss video game, and it's still my most favorite anime, actually, to this day. During this time, we also got back into rewatching Mega Man, and we also watched more episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! outside of the random episodes we saw when we were children. We started in order from Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters to Zexal, and when watching 5Ds though, I for some reason really liked the character Carly Nagisa or Carly Cameron as she's known in the English dub. And so I made a character based off of her, and also Haruhi from Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, and Kalala from Kalala Princess, which was my first manga that I count. I named her Meilu Kaila, the name coming from Meilu Sakurai from Mega Man NT Warriors, in the English dub her name is Meilu, and Kaiba from Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters. Although I replaced the B with the L to sound more girly, which definitely does work because I learned later on that Kyla was a real name, so I do like it. She was actually first just the side character in me and my brother's superhero story, but then we took her into a new series we worked on together along with four ever characters we created just for that, and it was basically Scooby-Doo mixed with Dinosaur King and Monster Buster Club, that American Canadian show. Does anyone else remember that show? Anyway, uh, for a while that's all she really was, till 
Sometime a little bit later, it wasn't that long, I started making my own series wizard by myself, and over time I made changes to her character and that series until slowly she became a completely different character altogether. And she was unreal recognizable from what she originally was. She was more taller, she was more stoic, she was more tragic in her backstory. So basically all that angsty 2000s edge. And because of that, I knew she could no longer be Mei Lu, so I renamed her Kyla Lacidian. I kept their name Kyla because I thought it would be easier since Kyla was already original in a lot of the drawings I made of her. And she is also the character I'm drawing in this video. The I actually made with her was originally just some really bad Yu-Gi-Oh! sexual fanfiction, and even just saying that is super cringe. But once I realized I started liking the series a lot, I turned it into my own series quite quickly, and I uh, made a whole bunch of new characters, most of them based off of the characters from Yu-Gi-Oh! Sexel, and some that were completely of my own imagination, and it became something that I've been working on for a long time, and I still am to this day. And nothing's really complete outside of I do have the entire concept in my head, most of it is written down on paper, besides mostly the ending. And I've got 8 characters designed out of 16 main characters, which isn't even counting all the villains and side characters, so I'm pretty much tuned in that aspect. But I do hope to start making a reality soon, and if I do, it will be up on my DeviantArt. Anyway, because of my love for anime, superheroes, and video games, and the Kingdom Hearts, most of my traditional art was all fan art, especially fan art of Yu-Gi-Oh! Sexual and Kingdom Hearts, as those two things were something I was really invested in, especially with Yuki and Sexual. I still do like both of the series to this day, it's just not to the same dangerous level it was back then. And believe me, that will not be the last time Sexual is mentioned here in this video. Anyway, it was also around this time of anime I found Vocaloid, which was something I actually discovered from Mark Roy's video of how to draw Hatsune Miku. And for that video, I found many of Vocaloid's songs, songwriters, and artists who work on the PV and also a few communities of all shapes and sizes. The oh book. My favorite creators were Moffy and his Evil Chronicle series, and I'm gonna try to pronounce it right. Hito Shizuku Yama San Ka K. Okay, not great, I still butchered it, but it was, it's getting better since I first tried to record this video, which was actually a long time ago because I keep messing up on the audio. Oh boy. Also, for artists, I fell in love with the art by Kay, the piece who draws the official artwork for Hatsune Miku, Kagamine Twins, Meiko, Luka, and Kaito, and also the artist Suzunosuke, who works for Hitoshi Zuku, and Yu and Ichiga, two who frequently worked with Mafi a lot. Suzunosuke also worked a lot with Mafi now that I'm thinking about it. Anyway, those three were the first ones that I really started to follow, and by follow, I mean I waited till Hito, Shizuku, Yama, and Mafi made new videos featuring their art, and then I would take screenshots of them because I didn't have any of our social medias outside of YouTube, so that's all I could do. So there was that. And for the longest time, I didn't even know their names for a while. Susanosuke, it took me a while to figure out she was part of Hito, Shizuku, and even to this day, in fact, I had to re-record this audio because I made the mistake just then, and I called her Shizuku instead of Suzunosuke because I guess it's part of... I get mixed up with Hito Shizuku, so uh, I, I call her Shizuku instead of Suzunosuke, which is embarrassing. And Ichika, I first called Itachi for the longest time because I read it wrong and it took me a while to look at it closer and correct myself. Even more embarrassing. And you, it just took... I just found out recently because I'm an idiot who doesn't know how to read video credits, apparently. And despite me loving these free artists and them being very inspirational in my life, I uh, never bothered to look them up until recent years, so. Anyway, another artist I also found at this time was called Rosary. I found Rosary through the anime English dub singer Amelie, or Lee and Lai, or Amanda Lee, whatever you want to call her. I really liked Rosary's art, and I followed her in the same stupid way by just waiting for Amelie to come out with videos or albums featuring her art, because again, that's all I had. Another artist I started to follow, but in a more legit way because they actually had a YouTube account that I could subscribe to, was also my first speed painter I watched. 
and first speed paint I actually saw in general, and that was the amazing artist known as Sunny Ways, who I found through the cool speed paint of Hatsune Miku. I didn't know anything about speed painting or digital art. All I knew was MS Paint from my old days and Photoshop, which I actually don't know how I learned about Photoshop. It was just something I learned and always knew about. I feel like it was beamed in my head like the word geek, and once it was there, I just always knew. So because of that, I'm honestly surprised I checked out Sunnyway's video because I don't usually check out things that I'm have no nothing about. But I think I just wanted to see some cool art of Hatsune Miku being made. And it was then I noticed that Sunny Waves was using a program called Painful Sai, which greatly interested me, but I knew nothing about how to get it or where to get it from. And after that, I watched a few more, one by an artist named Mermil, hopefully I remember slash pronounce that right, and another one called Nardek. And Nardek was someone who used a completely different software I knew nothing about, which I've now identified as Clip Studio Paint EXP. And once again, it interested me, but I didn't know anything about it or where to get it or anything to do with anything. Also, I legitimately forget if I was watching uh, Kiana Natsu at this time. I forget if I found her through YouTube or DeviantArt. I forget. Anyway, speaking of DeviantArt, uh, around in April 18th, 2015, I got myself a YouTube account, which I named Ryo Kamishiro Meilu Kaila. It was pretty stupid and long. Looking back at it now, the first thing I did was write a comment on Mark Curley's latest video requesting for him to draw a girl on a bicycle and considering his next video on Friday was a girl on a bicycle, I like to think he saw slash accepted my request or maybe it was just the biggest coincidence of my life. I don't know. As for uploading videos, I didn't really think I could do the whole art thing, or maybe I didn't really think about it at all in general, I legitimately forget. And so it was just kind of a natural thing for me to go the way of making Vocaloid and anime uh, English dubs. Kind of like Ama Lee and Jibi Famic, more on Jibi than the Ama, only unlike them, my recording system consisted of my brother's old 3DS, the lyrics I made that were really stupid, my voice which was way off key and sounded bad, and even worse was the bad quality. Oh, the quality. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't know anything about anything or how anything worked, so uh, I just held my camera, which was, like I said, a 3DS that my brother gave me, uh, which I'm really grateful for. So I just hold that 3DS up to my computer screen push play on some off vocal that I found and then sing with my crappy lyrics that I made and then just uploaded that onto YouTube and when people gave me negative comments, I ignored them. But looking back, I don't blame them. They were really right. I sucked really bad. Although I did get a few positive comments which actually surprises me. I even begged like a pathetic dog to ever check out my work which really is embarrassing now to think of and if I could just take it back, if I could go back in time, I would deeply change that. Ugh. But somewhere along the line, I wanted to try to do speed draws like everyone else I was seeing doing speed draws. And so, I decided to give it a try, and I grabbed my 3DS and went for it. My very first one was of, can you guess? <laughs> Yuma Sugimo, Ryoga, Kamishiro, Kaito Tenjo, and Katori Mizuki from Yu Gi Oh! Followed shortly by one of Sakura from Sakura Hime, a manga by Arian Tanamaro. But once I knew that this whole art thing might actually be something permanent, I created a secondary account in the same year and named it Saika Ichigo Kimishiro. It wasn't until a bit later I added the arc light. The Saika comes from Saika Miki from Madoka Magica, a magical girl show I don't really watch or like anymore. Ichigo after Ichigo Momiya from Tokyo Mimu, a never magical girl show I don't watch because I can't find it anymore because it was on YouTube and it's since been removed and I don't know where to find it anyway. And Kemishiro, well, of course, comes from Rizzo Kemishiro from Tokyo Gold. No, that isn't it at all. It is not. It is after Roga Kemishiro from Yukio's Exile, of course. And the Arcolite is after the Arcolite Brothers, three more characters from Yukio's Exile. No big surprise there. Anyway. Like my music, all of my art was recorded with the same 3DS that boy served me well. My only lighting was a dingy yellow light that my daddy gave me. 
but then I replaced it with an old light that used to be used in my baby room when I was well, a baby but I had to stop using that one because the light bulb exploded in front of my face one day when I was drawing and I have no idea why. Thank God it did not hurt me. I have no idea what happened. And it was actually right in the middle of the video too, so that sucked. Anyway, uh, I finally replaced it with a little dull white light that I got from Walmart with my own money. I actually still have that lamp, only now it's a reading lamp. And my tools were cheap printing paper and some art supplies I already owned from my fan art days, which consisted of some random Copic markers that I was inspired to get from Mark Curley, an assortment of color pencils from cheap brands to uh, more pricey brands, and some ink pens. And since I didn't know anything involving how to add audio for the longest time when I was done recording the video, I put it into Windows Movie Maker, edit the video, and then when I was done editing, I would hold my 3DS up to my computer screen and push play on the video and then some music and that's how I added it. And it was really bad and for the longest time that's all I did. And I did this for, like I said, quite a while. And the first video I made normally, uh, so it just had the music edited in, in the actual version and not doing that whole double record thing wasn't even intentional. It was simply because I ran out of time so I didn't have the time to do the whole double record thing. Which was good because it was my first video to hit over 100 views and over a thousand views so it would have been really crappy if it had the whole double record setup. And that was my video of Almond Luna. Yay, it's from a show I no longer really care about. I don't like... it's. I like the original one, but G was not so much as good. After that, I went back to the recording the same crappy way. It was the whole double way, but then I realized I can just add music like a normal human being and do it that way. So, yeah, thank you. I went to recording it normally. Most of these videos have since been taken down as they are of animes that I hate now, such as Code Geass and one that I hate so much that I refuse to even mention, or copyright reasons. They didn't actually have strikes on them, but I'm a very nervous person, so uh, I took them off before YouTube had the chance. Or they were just really, really crappy. There was one of the Arclight Brothers that I actually did like, but it was so bad that I just had to take it off. But I did keep the best, the most sentimental ones, and the most popular ones. My most popular videos on here and YouTube in general is two speed draws, the Am and Luna one and the Arc V Girls ones, which really irks me since, like I said, I didn't really like Arc V, and Carter Vanguard was just a big meh, so yeah, it kind of sucks that my two most popular videos are from shows that I don't really care about, but I am very grateful for all the views, so that makes a lot. Anyway. Finally, in the summer of 2016, I made one more change to my art life. The first being, I made a DeviantArt. Someone had asked me in the comment section of one of my YouTubes, Hey, do you have a DeviantArt? I said no. I checked into it and I was going to start one then, but I wasn't really feeling it that much. But then, after my dear internet sister, Mayu Aikawa, uh, aka Lydia, suggest I get one, I decided to, well, get one. Lydia was someone I actually met through Yuki's Exel. I found a cover of her second, a cover of the second opening braving that she did, and I first clicked it just because I wanted to see the picture she used for it, which was of the Arclight Brothers. But then I actually really liked it, and after that we hit it off, and in time um, we became good dear friends, and we still are really good friends, and I bring her up because in addition to suggesting that I get a DeviantArt, which allowed me to find so many wonderful artists and new friends even, she also encouraged me a lot by saying that my art inspired her, which is something my art never, never did. Also, 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 she helped me learn a lot of things in digital art later on when I decided to take up that task, which meant the world to me. So yeah, shout out to Leah, aka Mayu Fantasy, aka Mayu Akawa. She makes good YouTube music, and she's really cool in the art department, so check her out on DeviantArt. She does commissions, although I think they're closed right now, so you might be put on a waiting list. Speaking of digital art, the second biggest change in that time was I started getting into digital art. My amazing brother, same one I've been talking about this entire time, gave me GIMP and Paintsol Sai. I, I did nothing with them. 
Yeah, at first I wasn't really interested in the whole digital art thing because I just wanted to work at my traditional art and get better at that. But then once he said I can do the same thing that Sunnyways does, I was like, I can? And it kind of raised my interest. And I decided to take the step and learn. And somewhere, uh, I don't know when exactly, it was probably in April or June, I recorded my first speed paint. I got a screen recorder and I uh, attempted to do one. It was of Yuzu Haragi, as you already know. I don't know the exact date because I deleted it. <laughs> but after that, I started doing speed paints and it made me change my channel and become a digital artist. I do. I don't regret doing digital art at all, but I do feel bad for those earlier subscribers who probably subscribed to me for my traditional art, but now they were just going to be getting like uh, digital art, but I knew I'd be able to do digital art better because I already had the softwares, the screen recorder was free, the one that I was using, and so was the editor. And comparing that to traditional art, which was getting a little pricey with the art supplies that I kept on using. It would uh, become quite, uh, it became clear which one would be better for my wallet. So yeah, now I hardly actually even do uh, anime art in uh, traditional mediums. And I mostly just do uh, like painting and drawing animals, which is probably better. My mom likes that. <laughs> anyway, so after that transition to digital artists, Things were pretty normal. I did go through several different recorders. The first one I used was Cam Studio. I had to look it up because I forgot. And then I switched to Manicam, which had a free version that I could use, like a free trial version. But then I finally swapped to the free trial version of XSplit, which I used for a long time. And it had a lot more nicer recording features, plus screen capture, which I didn't always actually use. <laughs> but it was very nice. But now I use OBS, which is a lot easier and completely free. And for editing softwares, I used Windows Movie Maker for the longest, longest time for everything, but now I finally use DaVinci Resolve for my speed paints, which I've said several times before in earlier videos, but I'm gonna say it again, it works really, really great, it just works slower on my poor PC. Which, by the way, if you go back on my older uh, videos, which I don't recommend because they're really bad, you'll notice that my old speed paints and even my old, uh, well of course my old uh, speed draws will have my old name uh, in and intro and me saying that I do a new video every Saturday slash Friday. <laughs> that makes me laugh. I can hardly do one every month now, let alone every week. And my screen is also a lot much more smaller because I was working on a super, super small uh, w computer screen and compared to the what I have now, it was like a little breadcrumb. <laughs> and. I've got a lot bigger one now, which is really nice. It's still a little kind of, it, it works infinitely better than what I had, but it does get annoying because it does run slower because it's an all-in-one and it also hums a lot. But ribbon that, way better than what I have. Anyway, the next big change came around in late spring 2017 when I decided to make the choice to get a tablet. A lot of the videos I looked up teaching me how to really draw in Paintle Sci told me, well not me personally, but said in the video that I should use a tablet if I really wanted to give good at digital art. And I first didn't want to out of pure stubbornness and also as a cheapskate. But I had some money due to reasons and I decided to invest in a good but cheap tablet. I decided to get a Wacom because it was an ad for Wacom that first got me into thinking about this seriously, and let it be known, I'm still using the same freaking tablet. I got it used off of eBay for cheaper. It's a Wacom Intuos Pro Small Black. I don't think they sell that anymore, but they sell like the updated version, and if this one breaks, that's what I will be getting. And when I say used, it wasn't like used used by someone, it was just, it had all of its stuff and was still like new and it wasn't even in its original plastic and had part of its original box. It just didn't have like all the original box. I guess it was just like they bought it and then they were going to resell it for cheaper. I don't know. Uh, all in all, it's not something I would do again as I would only buy off Amazon or the main company itself and I would get a warranty with it. I mean, it could have been like huge ripoff, but I don't know. I guess I was in that stage where I didn't care if I wasted $70. I, I don't know why. I, I didn't have a job. I mean, like, ugh. 
but I, I think I just wasn't taking it seriously, so I didn't really want to spend the extra $10 to get it off of Amazon, but anyway, I don't know. And when I got a tablet, I was so scared of it. I felt like I was going backwards. I learned so much and now it didn't feel like I knew anything because I couldn't use my tablet. It was like I knew something in my brain and I knew how to do it semi good, but now my body couldn't even do it that good because I didn't know how to use the tablet. I did use it a bit for my Blue Angel Yu-Gi-Oh! Rain speed paint video just a little bit at the end, but uh, it wasn't going too well. But then I took a long time to practice. I even tried using a game called Orbi where you drag a ball through a maze with your mouse, only I used the pen instead of my mouse for a bit of practice. And then I realized the trick of stabilizers and that greatly helped. And I did some more practice on my friend Lydia's sketches. And then when my next video came out, which was of Rin Kagamine and her Tokyo Teddy Bear uh, video outfit, I used mostly my tablet for the entire thing and I was very happy with the results and I still am happy looking back at that drawing and after that I felt really good. I did say a few things in that video like a tablet wasn't a necessity. I still kind of agree with that sentiment just not the way I said it as it was stupid and everything I said back then was stupid. You can make art with a mouse. I did do it. Now note, me personally, I did my sketches with pencil and paper and you know, put them into the computer, and then I did my line art and coloring with the mouse. So it wasn't like I was drawing complete drawings from scratch with a mouse back then. But thanks to the line art tool inside, that helped me fix it up, the sketches nicely, and did the line art really nicely. And I actually still use the line art tool in the process of sketching and line art sometimes. But nonetheless, I did do a big part of my drawings when it came to the coloring and all that stuff was the mouse for a long time so you can do that it didn't look quite as nice as it was with the tablet but if you don't use a tablet or you choose not to use a tablet because you're stubborn like me and you just wanted to do it out of spite to prove all the tablet users wrong or you just legitimately like using a mouse either way you can do it and while it's true you do most likely have to work harder if you choose to go with a mouse I mean that's kind of true with anything if you have cheaper art materials it might be that you might have to work harder to get a nicer outcome than if you're using more expensive ones but in the end it also comes down to talent and how much practice you're going to put into it and how much time you're willing to spend so really it's all about personal preference of what you like but if you are worried about like money you can get a tablet for as cheap as $60 one that is at least nice. I know that Huion sells ones for $60 and I cannot judge them personally so I wouldn't necessarily recommend them but I have seen nice reviews of them on YouTube. I don't try them out myself because I would have to like disconnect this tablet to just try it out and plus I don't really have the money so sorry about that. But I do know you can get one as cheap for about $60 from the company Huion and Wacom, the brand that I use, the tablet that I'm, the upgraded version costs about like anywhere between 80 to $100 and it works really nice. And a display tablet isn't a necessity, that I will say. And although that is just a me thought, I do know Hyananatsu, the artist who's really good and way more talented than I do, am, says the same thing. There is a bit of disconnect with it because you're drawing on a tablet and you need to look up at the screen, but it just takes some practice. And I've never used a display tablet and honestly, I feel like if this one broke, I wouldn't get a display tablet even if I had the money just because I've been so used to it. And yeah, I don't regret anything about getting a tablet and I'm very well pleased with it and this boy has served me well for four years, especially considering that I've been using it almost every single day. That's 1,461 days practically, a little less than that because, you know, it was not literally every day there was a couple of days I took breaks but I do keep it plugged in almost all the time and yes I'm very happy with it after that there was uh, no real changes outside of basic improving my art I did make a few silly mistakes that I wish I could go back and change now like I had ever people's art on the side of my own so I could look at them while I uh, drew and although I still do that somewhat I try not to do that while I'm recording it, it's not me tracing I don't do 
tracing and I wasn't copying them or anything like that. I was just keeping them there on the side for like inspiration and now I wish I didn't do that. Also, uh, now I've gotten to the point where I just use YouTube's own music as it is way easier and I don't like to deal with anything copyright related. Which is really sad because I was hoping to use some of my, uh, my friend Lydia's music but I really just don't want to deal with copyrights. Uh, now, once again, like my speed draws, you'll notice that there are a few ones on there that have been taken down because of reasons. Copyrights, again, like, it wasn't really copyrights, it was just copy strikes, and I just, I don't like dealing with that. It's just really bad for me to think about. Or the speed paint itself was, like, really bad, there was only one that was taken down because of that reason, though I try to keep the rest of them on there, even if they are really, really, really bad and stupid. Uh, or the different shows I hate. So yeah, almost all my Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc V art, along with my Varane's art, has been abolished from this channel as I hate those shows. And to be honest, I don't really like any of the Yu-Gi-Ohs at all. After the last two series sucked in their endings, well, Varane's almost sucked all the way through in my opinion. And Seven's hasn't interested me, I haven't seen it at all outside of the first episode, and I don't even really care for DM or GX or 5Ds. I, I do like a few episodes of 5Ds, which is actually funny because that was used to be the one that I hate the, the most until Varane's came out. But nonetheless, the only one I love is Zexel. I still keep that one dear to my heart because it's very precious to me. And you can probably guess why if you've heard how many times I mentioned it in this story. Anyway, I do keep my Blue Angel ones of Varane's because I need it some of the popular ones out there, and I mean, if I deleted all my Arc V ones and my Varane's ones, I wouldn't have any of the most popular ones on there, because for some reason those were my most popular ones. And I was also really proud of them, even though I don't like Varane's, and, um, they were very fun to draw. My art made some great improvements when a friend recommended that I get Dollmaker, which is a software you can use to make 3D poses, which helped me a lot in coming up with original poses, because even to this day, I'm still not good at that, and I still use that software all the time, and thanks to that, I've gotten to the point where I can make my sketches completely with paint or sigh, and that's really cool, as it's something I didn't think I would ever be able to do. And now, because of editing and the way that digital art works, I'm actually better at making sketches in paint or sigh than I am traditionally on paper, so... I'm not sure if that's good or bad. Also, in Painful Sigh, I was feeling like I knew how to use everything in it. I was by no means good at using everything, but I at least knew how to use it. <laughs> I also tried out Midi Bang and Krita, which were free alternatives to Sigh because I thought I should shake things up for some reason, but in the end, I really wasn't quite as satisfied with them as I was with Painful Sigh. I really did like how in Midi Bang I could use the mouse with it and resize my drawings because I realized I probably should start uploading smaller versions of the drawings on DA instead of the full size versions. Although now I realize I can do it with Painful Size, so yeah, that's pointless, and I guess I also didn't know how to do everything in Painful Size, so oops. And in Krita, it had some cool effect brushes, which were really neat, but that's all I really used it for because that was all I needed it for was the effect brushes. Everything else I could do in Painful Size. And for what effects that I could achieve more easily in Krita, Midi Bang, and even Gimp that at the time were more harder for me personally to achieve in Painful Sigh, I could later on accomplish in Clip Studio Paint, only with 10 times better results in half of the time. So yeah, because of that, they have all got in the boot. Yes, Krita, Midi Bang, and even my first baby boy, Gimp, have all since been uninstalled from my computer as they were no longer serving their purpose like I wasn't opening them at all and they were just taking up unnecessary space on my computer so I didn't really need that so yeah but if you are new to the world of digital artwork then I do recommend them as all of them are really good if you're just wanting to try something out and you don't have any money like I said they are all free so good place to start but have money then I probably would recommend Paintful Sigh and Clip Studio Paint just because they do work a lot better. Clip Studio Paint does work a little bit more messy on a computer that isn't high powered so do take that into caution but rather than that everything that I could accomplish in all three of those softwares I could accomplish quite easily in Clip Studio Paint and I can even do some of it in Paintful Sigh now so they for me personally weren't serving any more purpose but Hey, that might just be me. A lot of people do like them, so to eat your own. Speaking of Clip Studio Paint, you're probably wondering about that. Well, for the longest time, I 
knew about Clip Studio Paint, but I never actually thought about getting it seriously. A few artists I knew used it, but they weren't the ones that I followed like crazy, so I wasn't that interested. I also had some ads for Clip Studio Paint, and it did make me want to try it. However, I was just afraid of going over a new learning curve. But finally, in 2019, I started noticing some of the artists that I followed like crazy, such as Hyananatsu and Nekurita, starting to use Clip Studio Paint now. And because I like their speed paints for studying purposes, I use them all the time to study. In fact, that's how I've gotten so good at digital artwork, is I just take their speed paints and slow them down and look at them like crazy. And that's how I learned. But because now they were starting to use Clip Studio Paint, I was wondering if I could actually still learn from them in the same way that I used to. I think I asked Nekarina why she switched. I don't remember exactly what she said, but basically I think it was others were using it and because she wanted to try it. I don't remember 100% if that's what she said. I do remember that I asked her and I do remember she replied and I do remember it was something fairly similar to that, but I just can't remember verbatim. I'm not trying to put words in the neck arena's mouth. But yeah, she basically said that and I think she said also that she did feel was better or worse than Psy, but it was still cool. And so, finally, in November of that year, I bought myself Clip Studio Paint when it went on sale, which was a really good deal. I got it for only $25. I thought it would be nice to buy it then when it was on sale, because then if it failed, it would only be $25 wasted and not $50. And I also convinced my friend, Lydia, to buy it as well, which she loves it, so I'm glad I did that. Anyway, for the longest time, I didn't use it outside of doing some quick edit effects and, uh using the uh, effect brushes mainly because I was super busy as it was Christmas time and I didn't have the spare time to learn how to use a new software and I had a lot of gifts to draw and I also had you know ever Christmassy things and then the next months after that were recovery time from Christmas so yeah not much time but finally in March 2, 2020 I took the time to learn the software and what better way than to do a complete illustration of Kanao Sieri from Kimitsu no Yaiba. And I thought it would be fun to record that and post it on YouTube. I actually watched that video recently, it wasn't so hot, but it was funny! And despite me not knowing anything about it and literally learning as it went, I literally found out about the assets in the middle of the drawing process right then and there. It was so crazy. But despite all that, I really love the software and I've been since using it like all the time and I've gotten to the point where I feel like everything that I can do in Paint Sai, I can now do in Clip Studio Paint. I don't know everything in Clip Studio Paint because there's so much more stuff in Clip Studio Paint, but I do feel like my knowledge in Paint Sai is equal to my knowledge in Clip Studio Paint, so that's cool. And because of that, I now use Sai. I meant Clip Studio Paint just as much as I do Psy even more, to be honest. I use Psy for the base coloring and the final edits, whereas in Clip Studio Paint I use for the line art, shading, coloring, and the effects. And although, like I said, I don't know how everything works, I do feel like I have know enough where I can do really good at my art. And now in my art journey, all that's left is to keep practicing, keep studying, keep learning, and keep getting better at pose drawing and keep getting better at line art and coloring. So basically everything, but hey, the journey never stops until you die. And I will continue doing all this until that moment. And I am so thankful that I've been able to do this and share all these wonderful speed paints here on YouTube. And I'm so happy that I've done this 200 times now. Like I said, I can't really believe it. And I am just so grateful and so happy now. It really fills my heart with joy. Huh, <sighs> that took a little bit longer than I thought. I messed up on recording this audio so many times, in fact I had to record this part just at last moment because I actually deleted it and I just now noticed in the editing process, so that was really fun. Now for the drawing, what little time there is left, uh, well really not much to say, it's based off of the original, the only difference is I added the floor, the door, the space themed background, I made the dragons come out in a different way and they are way more detailed and you can see their bodies more. Oh, I also changed Kyla's looking down solemnly at her hands and uh, she's wearing her updated outfit and she's holding her updated Hollis staff. So yeah, 
I'm probably going to talk more about the drawing in the description of this video and my DeviantArt because right now I am pooped. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, if you desire, you can do all the YouTube things uh, if you like the video. But if you did not like the video, thank you so much for watching this far anyway. It means a lot either way. And I hope you will be safe, be healthy, and Lord willing, I will see you again next time. Goodbye!